Brad, I feel like you get a sweet deal yeah. out of this. Lay it on me. You, you know, you, you get to come in at the very end. Oh yeah. And see the finale. This is it. Of the Capcom Arcade Cabinet Quick Look series. Jeez, what's it been? Like a month at most? Something like that. It's oh. been like five different packs or, okay. or whatever it is. So this is. Oh god, it went away. Oh, okay. Let's, let's watch that sweet intro again. Upper. Yeah. Um, this is the final pack of wow. three. Okay. And also, this will be the the revelation of the two bonus games like the, that you like, get for buying all the games. Like top secret bonus top games? Top secret bonus games. Do you know what they are? I do. Oh, man. Uh, I don't. I'll be surprised for real. Yeah. So, uh, let's, let's get in here and see the last three games. 1942 is one of them. Uh, I know that much. That's I don't a remember decent what the game. other ones are. Um, I don't remember. It's all a blur. But these these little uh, the the art things here have been filling in as you buy oh, the games. Oh, that's cool. So they start out uh, black and white and and, and go into colors. So now the, the this is it. Now you've completed Proof the that set. I spent too much money on this stuff well, because in another month or so they're going to be selling the whole pack at a mm, far cheaper rate price. than what I just paid huh. to buy each pack as they came out. Well, it wouldn't be Capcom the first time. Is good at business. Yeah. Actually, wouldn't I guess they are good at business, right? Uh, so, Sun Sun, Higamaru, and uh, 1942 are the three, but let's let's just do it now. It's not just the 1984 pack, it's also Vulgus. What? And 1943 Kai. Yep. Oh, oh, okay. It's uh, update, I don't... updated version 1943. Okay. And Vulgus, I believe, is the first Capcom game ever made. Whoa. Well, we, maybe uh, if, we I, just, if I remember correctly. Maybe we should just so. jump straight into that. Start at the beginning. Sure. Are you familiar with it? Like, do you do all does Sun Sun ring bells yeah, with yeah. you? That's, yeah. You, you know about all this stuff? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of any of this. Um, so you haven't seen any of this pack. I mean, Ryan's right. been with me the whole time. He's getting robbed here at the end. That's ah. what he gets for going to Los Angeles yep. uh, to, to scout out E3 spaces. Who what, cares about that crud? Location scout. I know. Uh, let's get into to Volgus here. So all these games have a casual mode. Uh, in addition, to, you know, it's like a just regular mode that's that's all this stuff. But then casual mode, it goes beyond what even the arcade dip switches would let you do um, by just straight up mm. making the game easier in a lot of really, you know, basic ways. Uh, and most games have just straight up tweak collision detection. So it's just you you have a smaller hitbox, more wow. or less. Huh. Uh, you know, give you more lives and, and different stuff like that. So... Uh, but, you know, you don't get to save to the leaderboards or unlock achievements or anything right. like that if, if you're doing that. God, that aspect ratio is so crazy. Yeah. Like, it's hard for me to remember that there were CRT monitors that, like, accommodated this. But yeah. There totally were, right? Yeah. It's not like they were just not using big parts of the left and right of the screen, right? Like, yeah, but is... I think this is, you know, this is like pixel aspect ratio. Okay, so... And so when this actually appeared in arcades, it was, it was a on more... a 4x3 screen, oh, or okay. I guess a 3x4 screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the vertical monitors, I believe, are just regular monitors. Just it's on their nothing... side? Yeah. Okay, that makes a little more sense. All right, so we're playing Volgus. We can, we can throw that bomb out there. It's a pretty simple game. Uh, you can kind of see some 1942 in this conceptually. Sure. This first the first appearance of the Capcom PAL. I, I, I probably, guess. I guess yeah. it would have to be right. What do you know? What year this is? I'm guessing it's not '84. Uh, it's it's it wouldn't be much earlier than that if it was. Um, have these uh, have these packs been going by year? Not no no. Or? Well well yes the the packs. I mean the the pack that I just got for this this week is the 1984 pack. Right. Um, what I mean is, can we work backwards and say if this is the last '84 is the last one? 83, 82, 81. No, no, it's, it's, a, it's like most of them have been newer, actually. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Um, Capcom, I want to say, may have started in 84. Oh, geez. So, okay. Not like one of those 100 year old Japanese companies or something? No. Let's get that D. I don't know what that D did. Ah! Oh, it's the Yashichi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a bad guy in this game. Oh, fuck that. How crazy is that? That's, man. Before it changed size. This is the sinister origin story of the Yashichi. <laughs> yeah. E. Some of these power-ups might not be doing anything because casual mode may have actually just given me all of them to begin <laughs> with. Might be why we're not noticing any difference.
Have you ever seen a Volgus machine? Uh, in the wild? I don't... I don't know that I have. Yeah. Probably not. That's all flickery. So we're in space. Did uh, did they did they front load this whole collection with kind of the more recognizable stuff? No, early they on? they kind of went uh, well. They, I mean, they opened with Ghosts and Goblins. Like they they spread it out pretty well. I feel like the pack before this one uh, was the was maybe the best one. It was what was it? It was Commando, the Speed Rumbler. Okay. And gosh, what was the other one? Might have been Savage Bees, which is actually a lot like this game. Um, I think Savage Bees might have been part of it. But, you know, they, they gun, like, Gunsmoke came out before this. Mm. Um, it's a decent roster of Capcom games, but, you know, modern fans of Capcom don't really care about any of these games. Sure. Uh, so it's, it's sort of weird. But I guess, you know, at, at the same time, Capcom has certainly released the hell out of the CPS and CPS2 era yeah. games. Yeah. I mean, it's not like those are underrepresented. They just maybe haven't been re-released lately. Right. Um, what What are the big things of the CPS era besides the fighting games? Like, well, I mean, like if you get into CPS one, I want to. Oh, I want to say that uh, Forgotten Worlds might be a CPS one. Final Fight is CPS. Oh, okay. Jeez, really? Uh, yeah. And then what were some of the later brawlers? Like, didn't they do a King Arthur game? Yeah, they did Knights of the Round. Knights of the Round. Uh, they That's did those right. D and D games. That's a lot of that stuff. CPS two. Right. Um, but all the, all that stuff has come out in some form, right? Yeah. Well, they're doing the D and D collection right now. Oh, that's uh, right. They're they're getting ready to put that out. Um, so I mean, th and that's so that's one of those things that you know you, you always started to kind of figure that just wouldn't happen because they'd have to go relicense yeah, stuff. Yeah, cra crazy. Got to get Watsy on the phone. Right. Not so savage now, are you? It's not especially vulgar either. Yeah. I want to crash into this and see if yeah, it's a warp zone. Yeah, those nope. things are... It's just like a hole in the screen. Well, you know, this is came... Uh, yeah, this was the era of games like Xevious. And I feel like Xevious yeah. has come up multiple times when playing these games. Uh, because there's there are a handful of games that you just look at and go like, Yeah, it's kind of like Xevious. Yeah. This yeah. game doesn't have the, like, bombing the ground stuff of a Xevious. And actually, I don't know. I, I think, want to say Xevious. Hmm. can't remember what year Xevious came out, so I, I couldn't tell you if this came out before it, but I don't think it did. Um. Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of basic. Like, you know, this is your bonus for buying all the games. Like, sure, I guess, because, you know, why would anyone want to pay for this? But, right. I'd say that about a lot, a lot of the games in this collection, honestly. I so. mean, this is more of a historical novelty than anything, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. all right, here's Capcom's first game. That's kind of interesting. Right. But also kind of not. How do they have the... I mean, I'm sure you've covered some of this ground in past quick looks, but how are the achievements split up in all this uh, They've got two per game. Okay. Um, like, I assume you get them on the bonus games, too? I don't know. Maybe. Look in a sec here, but... Savage bees. Uh, yeah. Gunsmoke, Section Z, Trojan. Oh, great. Which, uh, Trojan's you know, a good yeah. game. Legendary Wings, yeah. Yep, Sidearms, Avengers. Yeah. 43, Black Tiger, and 43 Kai now. Let's, well, let's just play the other bonus game. Was there ever a Section Z arcade game? Yes, that's. Okay. these are all arcade games. Section Z's in here. Oh, did I? I yeah. totally just missed that. Idea. Yeah. Okay. Let's just keep it cash. But here, this one might have more options. I'm yeah. not here to judge. Uh, yeah, so, you know, half price mega crash, you know, start with side fighters, all this stuff, you know, it's, it's making this game cool. pretty damn easy well, yeah, if you want to play it that way. It's neat that they got in there and kind of rooted around with that stuff. So this game was originally 87. It's kind of weird they went and hacked the yeah. title screens yeah. to show 2013. Totally. I don't, I don't approve. Uh, so if I remember correctly, 1943 Kai is just kind of a remixed version of 1943, where they've added lasers and some stuff like that. Uh, where's my side fighters? Don't they come after... Oh, well. But they kind of changed up some of the weapon stuff. And that's... 
There's a pretty good version of 1943 Kai for the turbo graphics. Or actually it might be super graphics. We gotta get a super graphics. <sighs> we have no. to. Yes, what, we, there's only just, like six fucking games. Exactly! Alright. <laughs> It'd be really easy to get a full set. And then stream them all. Also, I just wanna. I want to touch a super graphics in my lifetime. I mean, we could just go to Japan, and there are a bunch of sitting oh, wrapped man. in plastic all on right. a shelf that maybe I'll if, if that we could go touch if you just want to touch well, one. Well, what I mean is I want to play one. Yeah. If and when we go back over there, maybe I'll just buy a Super Graphics. But probably not that much, right? Probably not. Were these games on a, was there like a common hardware platform back then, like a, an earlier CPS equivalent, or is this, was this just kind of the, the nondescript, generic hardware of the I, I day? I think the, the, the hardware was, was, yeah, it was not unified necessarily, but, you know, you saw a lot of the same processors on a lot of this stuff. Right. Um, it's one of those things that is, has made the main project really interesting, is, is kind of looking at, you know, cause a big part of that is, is actually just documenting the hardware. Right. And you start to look at, like, how many different games were able to run on Galaxian hardware. Right. Um, or Pac-Man hardware and stuff like that. Right. And, and then it's not just... It's not just games that were originally developed to run that way, or, or Scramble hardware, actually. There's a ton of stuff there, too. Huh. Um, it's that bootleggers of the day were hacking these games to run on common hardware platforms. Oh, weird. So they knew that operators would have, or they could get their hands on very cheaply, Galaxian hardware or, or you know, these different types of, types of basic hardware platforms for really popular games. Right. So if they could take newer games and hack them to run on this hardware, even if there was a reduced, uh, you know, audio or something like that as a result, like, it was still worth it for them because they could go out and sell these bootleg machines. Right. Um... And you ended up with, you know, it's like, I mean, if you look at the just how many Pac-Man hacks existed back then, you know, that, that were not necessarily just trying to even duplicate games, but were just like, you know, changing the Pac-Man mazes and all this other crap. It's just really crazy how stuff was back then. I wonder if, uh, was that back in the days, this, this might have been earlier than that, more like late 70s, but when you could actually get your hands on, like, the chips and... and Oh, yeah. Like, actually put boards together yourself? I don't, I don't know if that stuff was, you know, like a breadboard or whatever. Maybe, I, maybe yeah. the stuff was a little too complicated for that. I'm not sure, yeah. Or maybe you just needed to get the entire board whole cloth from the manufacturer. Yeah, I'm not sure how they were doing it. Like, a lot of that stuff was coming out of China, I think. Huh. Um, and then they would import bootleg machines. And in some cases, the operators wouldn't even know that they were buying fake machines. You would just have someone say, like, Yeah, yeah, I got Donkey Kong, <laughs> yeah! And then you would get a bunch of crazy Kong machines, and then you'd realize why they were half price. Uh, Let's go back in time and introduce Mike Micah's hacked Donkey Kong ROM. Right. Into arcades and see how it changes history. <laughs> if you play it as Pauline from the beginning. Right. What a different world we might be living in. Uh, so, so does that mean the main emulation effort is organized around games more than it is like specific chips? No, it, well, it is, it is, it, is it organized both? around chips okay. in a lot of cases, like the Z80 processor, right, right. you know, documenting that, and, and you know, back in the days when they hadn't done most of the emulation work uh, for games of, of this era, you would have situations where they would, you know, okay, we finally got this chip emulated, and now these 20 right, games right. work, you know? That's like, cool. this processor is yeah, now... Yeah, yeah. Is now good to go, so we can do this. I mean, like Mame originally started as a Pac-Man emulator, right? Uh, or called like Multi-Pack, I want to say. Um, and you know, they were they were they had all kinds of weird. Oh, I want that milk bottle or what? Oh, I missed it. Flying cat. I think shape that would I think that would have given me. Was it cat? I was not even like sure a... what it was. Um, I'm just dying over and over again. Hey man, it's casual. I'm just here to have fun. I don't know, I, I might have actually fucked up and not picked casual. Oh. Um, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, you're definitely not starting with side fighters. Yeah. But, anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I wondered if a lot of that stuff got complicated, because I assume that, like, even with a fairly common board, like, yeah. like, scramble or whatever, I wonder if, like, you'd have the odd game where it's like, 
Yeah, it uses that board, but it has one extra weird coprocessor on yeah, there. Yes, so it'll be stuff like that, and or it'll be stuff where, you know, like, at some point, game developers started coming up with their own protection to try and prevent their games oh. from being copied so oh. easily. Uh, so you would have encrypted ROMs, and that's, that's all of Capcom's CPS2 stuff. Oh, right, is, right. Is based around this insane encryption that took years and years for people brute forcing it and figuring out different stuff to get it to work. And that thing is backed up by a, a, a battery that, when it dies, eventually renders your board useless. What? You're, you were the, you were supposed to send it back to Capcom, and they would. There was one chip that was that was volatile, so when the battery died, right. it would lose that security data. And you couldn't once once it had been lost, you couldn't you, just you couldn't do it yourself. You couldn't just restore the battery, and it would work again, right? If you did it fast enough, and okay. that was the thing that you know a lot of people didn't realize is. Uh, is it, yeah, you, or, you know, if you were into servicing the board yourself, you know, people were like, okay, we need to not unclip the existing battery because it's not dead yet, but we need to clip this other battery in and then be very uh. fast about, you know, how we how we do this. You know, there were that's how people were self-servicing in that stuff. Um, but if but you, you were supposed to send it back to Capcom, right. they would hook up a new battery, you know, re-burn that chip, uh... And send it back to you. Jeez. They only relatively recently, in the in the grand scheme of things, stopped that service. Huh. Um, so if you've had a CPS board in your garage for like, you know, the battery's been yes. dead for like three years, yeah. you're just out of luck? So, not anymore. Okay. Um, as part of, and it's, it's one of the, you know, it's like, emulation's a weird fucking thing. It leads to a lot of, you know, gray market, gray area stuff. Of, of, you know, games being pirated and all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, by the documentation efforts, there is now a process by which you can burn an unencrypted set of ROMs for, for mini CPS2 games. Okay. And then you just don't have to worry about it. And then it you don't have to worry about it ever again. That is technically against the law, ah. I think. Right. But... Uh, you know, I, I have a dead, uh, what is it? I have a dead Alpha 2, or Zero 2 Alpha board yeah, like right that, now. Yeah, that was the thing that you were going to have to get Steve Lynn to, like... Well, he ended up giving me some batteries, okay. um, but I need to Phoenix the board. I need to... That's to Phoenix, that was the yeah. thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the people that have those, ch the, those ROM sets are trying to make money off of it. Oh. So they're like, hey, send us the board and this amount of money and we'll Phoenix it and send it back. And I think some of the ROM dumps for that stuff have gotten out there, so you could theoretically do it yourself. I just don't know. I haven't looked into it super deeply because it is such a weird, weird area. But uh, but yeah, I have that. And then that's dead. I still have some that work, but they're not going to work forever. I don't have them hooked up in a cabinet, so it's not like they, they have power going to them uh, to keep them alive. Um... Yeah, so my Puzzle Fighter board at some point will yeah. go dead. My Alpha Three. Yeah. Think about yeah. Think about all the, the like the decay of digital, like video game information from like the '80s that's just rotting away in garages and stuff. Right and now. that's like, been the, the 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 truly great thing about Mame is you know in a, in a world where modern companies. I mean it's you know it's great that Capcom is putting this out, this package. You know because they're. It's not. It's not a perfect package. Like I, you know, it's. It's the. I don't think the pricing is great. It's ten dollars for three games. I think right. that's that's expensive. Wait a minute. Per pack? Yeah. Every pack has been ten bucks. Are you serious? Yeah. What? Yeah. That is insane. It's a lot of money. That is batshit crazy. Um, well, I guess from their perspective, like, is it going to amount to sixty in the in the final analysis? I guess because because I wonder if maybe they fifty just, or sixty. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. And, they, and a lot of these games are games that you know they did put out a package that had all this stuff right. on it on like the PS2 in Japan. Uh, that's, or that's, it was five PS1 discs or something like that. Probably their reasoning is that yeah we we could sell this as a retail disc. And at some point, it's not worth it for them to do the work to get this thing together. It's why Game Room fell apart. Right. Is you know the the money doesn't work out. You know, it, in a world where you think like oh you know maybe I should spend a dollar per game. Right. Which I think is is something that makes sense. Is it worth it for Capcom to do the work for a dollar per mm -hmm. game, considering the number of people that are or aren't interested in playing 1943 Kai ever again? Right. Um, and so you you would have you know so I, I I do think it's great that Capcom's doing this even if the business doesn't doesn't make sense in a, in a lot of ways. Um, well, but for the companies that have gone defunct, for the companies that that don't exist anymore, yeah, for yeah, the companies yeah. that are, that are unwilling to do that work. It's great that even if it is this f super shady thing, 
it, it, you know, and it, it's I'm, I'm to separate the emulation end from project end, which is noble and awesome, from the ROM torrent end. Right. Um, though that's it's harder and harder to separate that stuff. You, I mean, let's be honest. Um, it's great that that work is going on. Yeah. You know, it's great that, that this stuff is being preserved in, right. in some way. Uh, you know, because there are a ton of and it just, you know, this is stuff like, I mean, I, I've been doing some of it. I have Super Nintendo prototypes and stuff like that that, you know, I went out and bought something that'll dump those games just because I know at some point those carts will go bad. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking about just now with the batteries dying and everything. Like, I've got all of my, like, 20 SNES games in a box from, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. That are probably losing their save games by the day, you know? Sure. Like, I keep meaning to get a hold of one of those uh, USB-based, like, SNES cart dumper things. Yeah, yeah. And you can just drag all the saves off onto a desktop uh, just to, you know, keep it for posterity. It's like I put 70 hours into Final Fantasy III. It would be cool to have that data right. in perpetuity if it hasn't already, already just, like, evaporated into the ether. Yeah, yeah. It's a bummer because one of the carts that I have is like a Ronma one half fighting game. It's like a pre release version of that, and that cart's bad. Oh, that's right. I remember it's I just have like some, a bare circuit board. Yeah, right? yeah. I have some Tengen Genesis games. Is that like all stuff that never came out? No, it's or all. It is all stuff that came out. Like just, some of it maybe preview, okay. like you know, like like non final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't really know uh, in some cases, but I've got like an Earthworm Gym that doesn't have the ending in it ah, that they sent out right. to reviewers. So that people, like, it's just like it has a business card, and then on the back of the business card, someone ran it through a typewriter and just says Earthworm Jim fingerprinted copy, X, you know, whatever fingerprint ID they put on there. Right. And then it says ending disabled. <laughs> um, I bet it's really hard to diagnose when one of those cards goes bad. Right. Yeah, yeah. To figure out exactly what it is that won't make it boot. I bet you know someone would know. But yeah, sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to, to know for sure. It's not like you can just eyeball it and figure out what the problem is. Yeah, or even if you can, can you even fix it? Right. Uh, that's 1943 Kai. Those are the bonus games. Let's get into the three games that I actually paid for. Man, um, when I built those three PCs here, two of them worked perfectly, and one of them would not post. Yeah. Yep. And I spent all afternoon swapping stuff in and out, trying to figure out what was going on like with that from thing. the other machines yeah. and stuff, trying to figure out what the bad part was. Nothing would work, and I was like, all right, it must be a bad motherboard because all these other parts are verified to be good. Yeah. And then I just happened to, like, the when I took the CPU out, the socket caught my eye, and I noticed there was, like, something looked off, and I got down real close, and one of the, like, several hundred pins sticking out of the CPU socket was bent down. Oh, yeah. So I had to like get down in there with a knife and like bend very carefully, up very yeah, yeah. very gingerly. Yeah, I had to do that with totally, some of those Genesis totally ROMs, and they're they're just missing prongs. Right, right. Uh, like prongs that snapped off right. because you would, you know, in some cases you would get a bare board and just be sent the chips, uh, which is ridiculous. Um, try to solder a pin back on there and see if it works. Yeah, I don't know if I that's guess. even possible. I don't, I don't know. Sun Sun's kind of a weird game. Yeah. Like, it's a scrolling shooter, but kind of a platformer. Yeah, weird. Kind of push up and down to uh, change levels, and then I just shoot. Oops. I didn't mean to jump Or up die. There. Or die, yeah. All of these have been out in the U.S., right? Or any of these Japanese uh, only releases? 1943 Kai may have not okay. been but, officially released But here. this, for sure? Sun Sun? Yeah. yeah, I think so. He gave Maru, is it the, the other one? Yeah. Is that the name of it? Like, that's not even an English name. Yeah. I've never, I just, I asked mostly because I've never seen or heard of a lot of this stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, uh I mean, it's, back in some of these days, Capcom wasn't putting out its own stuff in the U.S. A lot of the Japanese companies weren't. Other companies were set up okay. as just licensing houses, basically, that, you know, Capcom would license... Uh, Gunsmoke to there's a company called Romstar, uh, and so you'd see Romstar copyrights on a lot of these Capcom games, or at least the the U.S. versions of them, right? And Capcom USA opened, and Matt Atwood, all that stuff. <laughs> 
Capcom's illustrious history. <laughs> he, he stabbed out Mighty Blow. Yeah. And the rest was history. Whoa! Scary oh, spinning those, devil those coins. Those kill you. <laughs> I was those like, are, maybe I need to get the... Oh, that just walked me out and killed me. Those are not again to be collected, again. clearly. Well, do you have unlimited lives? What's going on up there? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like boss music. Oh, jeez. It's like that Contra level. I was just about to say. It's like the, the end of Contra level 1. I don't Ashiji. know. Yeah, so... That's Sun Sun. Yeah. Oh, God. Wow, those are... Those are large sprites. I can shatter the shield if I shoot enough. Music kind of alright. Yeah. So was this music. Yeah, this music's really relaxing. I, I know. <laughs> I thought I saw in one of the comments that someone was saying that got kind of a fantasy star online during mm. the lobby kind of thing going on. Yeah, like there's almost a little bit of a funk vibe to it, but not quite. Yeah. All right, here's Pirate Ship Higamaru, which I may, maybe didn't come out here now that I think about yeah. it. Yeah. That looks interesting. If it's not just another vertical scrolling shooter. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of those in here. Lesson one. What are you doing? I threw the barrels at those dudes or touched them. Alright, so we can pick up these barrels and we can uh, fling them at these dudes to take them out. And sometimes the barrels are flashing, which means I can find a sick fish. <laughs> Let's go I would not recommend fish. eating sick fish. Probably not good for you. Whoa, what did I... Oh, that guy stood back up, right? I... Sure. Sure. Yeah. Alright, we only got two more fish, so... Oh, I figured that would have been it. Maybe I gotta take out the last of these pirates. This is like Pengo if you can pick up the ice cubes. I gotta, yeah, that just knocks that guy out and doesn't actually kill him. Guy has a serious pirate beard. Yeah. Double up. Yep, two for one. Whoa. That seems good. Anchors away, I guess. Am I invincible? <laughs> While that music is playing, maybe? I wonder if that's the... I wonder how much it actually costs Capcom to make a thing like this. We'll talk about there not being a lot of people out there who want to buy this, which is probably true. Yeah. But I wonder what like the I wonder what the budget is on a thing like this. Yeah. Like I, I can't imagine it's a ton. I wonder if they have to do like all the emulation work from scratch or if they I guess they'd have to license it if they didn't do it themselves, right? Right. Uh like they own all the ROMs or they own all the games. Right, yeah. They gotta get them running. You've got like little art stuff around the sides here and whatnot. You gotta, I don't know, get your scale form on or whatever to, to right. put all the menus, menus together and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I just walked into that dude and killed him. If I can get there. While he's down. If I paid more attention during lesson one, I wouldn't have any trouble at all, but. 
I still think the only way to do this is through a subscription service. It's the only way you're gonna... Yeah. But it, it's, you know, I imagine that people smarter than me have tried to do the math on that and figuring out what everyone would need to get paid. Right. Well, you'd need a, you'd need a big enough library of games to make it worth subscribing yeah, to, right? right? Otherwise, you know, people subscribe for one month, play all the games, and then... Yeah, or you, just end, you end up with game tap at some point. Which... Right. Let's just die. All right. Final game. Final game. Time Ever. to close it out. Ever. Video games are over. Capcom's last release, 1942. Real classic. The original. It's still the best. How many 1940X games were there? Were just the two? There's 1942, 1943, 1943 Kai, and 19XX. Hmm. There was Strikers, 1941, but that's not them. Uh... I think that might, they might have done a 1941 game like way mm. after the fact. A, a prequel? Yeah. I play this on the NES. Yeah. Primarily. Yeah. Real good music in this. And that it'll make you crazy and stick in your head forever. Decades, let's say. It doesn't go anywhere from here, by the way. No? This is the music. This is it? This is it. Wow. I don't even know if this qualifies as music. I guess so. There's certainly nothing melodic about it. I like to think that whoever did the music in this game was just way into like taiko drums and whistles or you know or, or yeah, just sure. had there was some real world thing he heard there this is the other music aha uh -huh. last 32 stage there are 32 stages uh, it counts down oh i see which was really confusing and i can roll to get out of trouble Kind of a hallmark of the series, right? Yeah. In 1943, they, you know, made it so you were crashing and doing damage to everything on screen and rolling out of the way at the same time or, you know, stuff like that, so... It was... Has it ever been a topic of discussion, as far as you've noticed, that, that it's strange and ironic that here is this Japanese developer making a game about the American war effort against Japan. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Never heard that come up, but surely yeah. somebody must have... I want to say that there's something of a legacy of that, that, yeah. that this is not the only uh, game that's done it. But I, The first TGS I ever went to, uh, what was the Medal of Honor? Was it Rising Sun? Right. Was the first one in the Pacific Theater? Yeah. Because they'd all been in Europe before that? Mm-hmm. And there were like, there were like Japanese booth girls wearing American service uniforms at the EA booth at right. TGS, showing off this game. And it wasn't even where you know, you're fighting Japanese soldiers. Like it was a really well, strange. You're, you're thing. tempted to look at that and go like, oh, how insensitive. But that's it wasn't even a consideration, right? For you know, as far as I can tell, for anyone present, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know enough about Japanese history to really say how they think about this era in history and my, and my understanding sort of stuff, is that they kind of don't yeah like the like the, the the attitudes in germany and japan are like as different as could be about those things yeah like the the german attitude is one of absolute contrition like you, you know as a small german child you're told from a young age about how fucked up all that stuff was sure uh, whereas it's just kind of ignored in japan Right. But then comes up in these really weird, weird but yeah, cultural but ways. But then go that... and make a game like this. I don't know. That's, that's just my understanding of it. Yeah. Anyway, 1942 is pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a pretty good shooter. It's, uh, you know, it's a genuine classic. Um, you blow up real good. You can roll. Are you cashing this one? Yeah. That's why I have so many lives. Okay. 
They still won't give you all the stuff, right? Uh, there's less stuff in this game oh, than there okay. was in 43. There, are, there so, are no side yeah. fighters or anything like that? Uh, I believe there are ah. side fighters. I don't remember, actually. You go from two shots to four okay. when you pick up POWs, POW. but not that POW. Can you shoot the POWs? No. Oh. No, that was all 43 That's a major stuff. innovation in 1943. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the war R&D effort was in full swing at that point. Exactly, like, exactly. <laughs> Well, I guess there was also the the recent like 1943 game they did, right? That uh, came out. Oh with, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I totally forgot about that. That thing. That was Backbone Entertainment. Memorable. The Backbone Joint. Through joint Strike. Scanlon Production. That's right. <laughs> Drew Scanlon presents. 19. What was it called? Joint Strike. The joint Strike. 1940. Yeah. Drew uh, Scanlon. Why was that game so disappointing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what was not disappointing about that game was the weird uh, odd numbered achievements. <laughs> because that game was game was real good uh, for evening your your, oh, your, yeah, yeah. your your points back up. Right. I used that game to <laughs> to get because, even uh, like that. And there was that they did Commando, which was also not a great game. Yes, uh, I, I, could, I did not Wolf of the Battlefield. Yeah, yeah. I did not much care for that one. No, nope. uh, the forty three game was was not garbage, but I mean it wasn't great. It was like a weird era with Capcom where they yeah. kind of hadn't figured it out yet, and you had that. That that stuff and then like Rocket Men. Yes, I remember they were kind Axis of honing of e their Axis of Evil, wasn't it? Rocket Men. Yeah, like that pre uh, Bionic pre Commando, Bionic Commando yeah. rearmed right. uh, Capcom. There we go. All right, now that's some fighters. Yeah. Uh, God, yeah, I've forgotten about all that stuff. A lot of people have. Yep. And the people who do remember, I'm sure, some of them would love to forget. That game was great though, because there were three planes, and. It was either two sixes and one seven, or two sevens and one six, I uh -huh. forget, but beating the game with each plane gave you a six or a seven point achievement. <laughs> right. So you could look at your score and do the math, it's like, oh, well, here's the plane I need to beat it with to get back to... And then there was like a continue bug in Commando yeah. that let you, I, 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 yeah, you uh, could, just keep playing it, and, and it was really easy to grind out all the achievements if you wanted them, was, but I didn't, didn't. I think it, that may have been one of the early points where I was like, I think uh, this achievement thing might, might ah. stop. <laughs> <laughs> I always wished I had done that one, because it only worked online, so you can't even That's clear, what it was, You can't yeah. even clear your cache and use it, because, right. because getting online to play online, it'll, you'll pull the patch again. Yeah. Uh, I think it was it was a weird bug because you had to like open the Xbox guide, and it would refill your right. health. That's what it was. Yeah, uh, and I always meant to do that and never got around to it. Yeah, I, I did it enough to know that it worked, and then when like, all right, well, I don't know, if I want to play any more of this. You would rather play 1942 than Wolf of the Battlefield. Is that a, is that yeah. a fair statement? Yeah, uh, yeah, abso all right. absolutely, all right. absolutely. Uh, well, that's it. Yeah, that's it, Brad. This is, this is an this is the unceremonious end. This is the Capcom Arcade Cabinet. Yeah. It's uh, bless them for doing it, yeah. even if they're charging too much money for it. So, but you know, like I said, in a few weeks they're going to put out uh, a pack that's going to oh man, um, that's going to get you all the games for a lower price. Yeah, do you know, do you, know you, end up, you end up saving ten bucks or, oh, okay. or you know, maybe even twenty or something. Geez, so that'll still be a, a fairly pricey download. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, 30, 40 bucks or yeah. something. But if you know, if you, if you want some of these classic Capcom games and some of these not so classic Capcom games, this is an okay way to get them. Yeah. Is there any any like supplemental stuff in yeah. here? Artwork and things. You unlock a uh, wallpaper and jukebox stuff for okay. some of these games. All right. Well, let's, let's just you know let's let's finish on. So it's like a decent okay yeah a gallery decent little museum piece. It's decent, yeah. If you're, if you're really into this stuff. But, you know, it's you have to uh, play yeah. the games to unlock a lot of the stuff. Mm. Uh, but then there are extra gallery. Sound player. Um, Sound test. Special picture. Scan of a previously released publication. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, then yeah, sound player. Sound player is good because it has some stuff that was in the game, things that were in the ROMs that weren't used in the game. Oh wow! In some cases, like it's a pretty complete. Um, is it? Is it also sound effects? It is. Uh, some of it is. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Do they have coin insert sounds? Because maybe we do this on our own time. But this is the this is the noise. 
Okay. That's the, the credit drop noise. Maybe we should do this on our own time, but what do you say we stop talking and make some ringtones? Text message tones. <laughs> yeah. Like this one. And then when your phone rings, it can play this. This would never not piss off oh, everyone. Oh, that's a fucking great ringtone! Uh, we can get into... Can I switch games from here? Yeah. I wonder if this is actually emulating the sound hardware when it does it, or if they just recorded all this stuff. Right, if it's all just digital. Yeah. Oh, that's great, too. Yeah. I might grab that. I might grab that Ghosts and Goblins one. Yeah. That one's pretty good. I'll say Trojan was one that had... I can't remember what game had some unused stuff. If you want some, some ringtone music, it's... it's... That's that's the loop point. Oh, right it's there. so hard not to talk during yeah. that. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if uh, I don't know how they're set up in the control room. If they even split the gameplay audio and us talking out anymore. Uh, but I may. Talk. Yeah, we do that. Okay, we do do that. I have confirmation that we can get the raw gameplay of this quick look. <laughs> I will be speaking with Mr. <laughs> Scanlon later. Yeah. All right. All right, Jeff. This that's, is a, uh, a decent collection, I guess. Even even if it's a little pricey, it's pricey. That's yeah. the the issue with it. Is is that you know this was each one of these quick looks we did was another ten bucks on yeah. games, which oh. I just don't think is a not the best deal in the world. Is, is a great deal. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I don't have any of the special pictures. <laughs> even after we spent all that money, man, I don't have anything. Play, I don't have anything. Play for five hours. Just leave one of them running. Yeah. Yeah. All right, All right, Brad. Yep. Thanks. Sure. Thanks for watching, everybody.